For a quick review of interval notation, we're going to first look at some number lines. In this first number line, we see that every value above 1 is shaded in the solution region, including 1. If you were to write this as an inequality, you would typically write this with x is greater than or equal to 1. But we want to write that in interval notation. Interval notation is a quick way to summarize a solution region. In this case, it'd be all the values from 1 to infinity. This is a defined point at 1. It's equal to 1, so we're going to have a bracket there. But there is no defined stopping point for this inequality. It's going to keep going on forever to infinity, so we put a parenthesis. Infinities will always use a parenthesis. In the second number line, we have every value below 2, but we're not including 2. It's an open circle, so that's not included. As an inequality, you might write that as x is less than 2. But in interval notation, we're going to summarize that as parentheses negative infinity up until 2. 2 is not included, so we get a parenthesis there. There is no defined stopping point to the left. It's just going to keep going on forever to negative infinity. So we have a parenthesis there and a parenthesis at 2 because 2 was not included. You might have compound inequalities where if we looked at this, this is every value between negative 4 and 3. In interval notation, we would have a parenthesis negative 4 all the way up to 3 with a bracket. That's including every number between negative 4 and positive 3. The second one here, we have two sections. This first section, because we're going to go from least to greatest, would start at negative infinity all the way up until 5. And it's going to get a bracket because 5 is included. But there's a gap in my interval. There's another section, so we're going to represent that gap with our union symbol. A union looks like a U kind of symbol. And then it starts back up at 8, but 8 is not included. So we're going to put a parenthesis. 8 all the way to infinity with a parenthesis on the infinity again. This next number line looks a little different because we don't have two regions. We really only have one shaded region and another included dot. This right section would be from negative 4 all the way to infinity. But we want to include that negative 7 is also a solution. So we have a single solution that we normally write in these braces, these squiggly brackets union the negative 4 to infinity. So if it's a single sol solitary number, you're going to put it in braces. Here I've written the inequality, and we want to just practice shading this on a number line and then writing this in interval notation. So for this, k is less than or equal to negative 2. So I'm going to find negative 2 and I'm going to close it in because it's an equal to, it includes negative 2. But we want all the values that are less than, so to the left of negative 2. In interval notation, that would look like parentheses negative infinity all the way up to negative 2 with a bracket. v is greater than 4. I'm going to find the 4 and put a circle. This is going to stay open because it doesn't include 4. It doesn't say or equal to. It's just strictly greater than 4. All the values greater than 4 are going to be to the right of 4. So in interval notation, we have parentheses 4 to infinity. This third one is saying all the values between 1 and 6. This w is some number that's less than 6, but also greater than 1. So I'm going to find those boundaries 1 and 6, put my circles. 
Both of those are going to be open because we're not including 1 or 6. And we're shading all the values that are between. To represent this in interval notation, we have parentheses 1, comma 6 with a parenthesis as well. The next one is m is less than or equal to negative 3, or m is greater than 5. So if I find negative 3, I'm going to put a solid circle. m has to be less than or equal to this. So less than would be to the left of negative 3. And that's going to go on forever to the left. But we also have the values that are bigger than 5. m is greater than 5. So I'm going to find 5. It's not included. And we're going to shade to the right. So this would be parentheses, negative infinity, all the way up to negative 3 with a bracket, union, and then parentheses 5 to infinity. The last one here is x is less than 2. So I'm going to have a open circle at 2, and every value that's less shades to the left there. And then x could be equal to 4. Since it's a solitary number, we're going to have a single dot at 4. It doesn't go shaded either way, it's just 4. In interval notation, that's parentheses, negative infinity, up to 2. 2 is still a parenthesis because it's an open circle. Union, and then we have a solitary number. So that one number is just 4, and it goes in these squiggly brackets called braces. We're going to use interval notation to describe a lot of inequalities as solutions, but also describing key features of a graph, like the domain or the range. 